The global technology stage is changing in ways that just a few years ago felt unthinkable. For decades, the West dominated the playbook, designing the chips, building the tools, and setting the rules. But today, a new force is reshaping the digital future. China. This is not a story about catching up anymore. It's about rewriting the rules of the game entirely. And if you stick with me until the end, you'll see how China's advances in semiconductors, smartphones, and satellite communications are not only shaking Silicon Valley, but also redrawing the balance of power for decades to come. Now, before we dive deeper, if you find this kind of breakdown valuable, do me a quick favor. Hit that like button and share this video with a friend who follows global tech and geopolitics. It helps this channel reach more people like you who care about where the world is heading. Let's get into the story. In January 2024, something extraordinary happened. Chinese engineers received a signal Operation Sovereign Silicon was live. Within hours, $15 billion worth of cutting-edge Dutch lithography machines, the very heart of chip manufacturing, were rendered useless. Their software froze. Their links to Europe were severed. In effect, China had declared technological independence. Think about what that means. For years, chip making was the world's most globalized industry. The Dutch supplied the critical machines. Taiwan turned raw silicon into advanced chips. America designed the blueprints. China assembled the final products. Everyone needed everyone. But that fragile balance cracked, and China decided it would no longer play by someone else's rules. This didn't happen overnight. Back in 2022, when the US leaned on the Dutch government to stop exporting extreme ultraviolet machines to China, most analysts scoffed. They said China couldn't survive without access to Western equipment. But instead of folding, China quietly launched its own Manhattan project for semiconductors. Billions were poured into labs. Tens of thousands of engineers were reassigned from consumer tech firms to secret facilities. Families moved to so-called chip cities. For many, life became a grueling nine to nine, six day a week mission to break free from foreign reliance. The first hints of success came in 2023. Against all odds, Huawei released the Mate 60 smartphone powered by a seven nanometer chip made in China. Experts were baffled. How did they do it without the latest Dutch tools? The answer, computational lithography powered by AI. Instead of depending on the most advanced equipment, engineers combined older tools with brilliant software tricks, bending physics to their will. By 2024, the pace quickened. Chinese foundries like Smyk reached five nanometer chip production yields that many said were impossible without EUV technology. Beijing announced Project Kun, a master plan involving nearly half a million people hundreds of companies, and nearly half a trillion dollars in investment. It was in scale bigger than the Apollo program. The sacrifices were real, but so was the momentum. Engineers joked about being semiconductor widows as spouses worked endless hours, but national pride swelled. Each new breakthrough wasn't just about chips, it was about sovereignty. And the ripple effects were global. Stocks in companies like ASML and TSMC tumbled. NVIDIA faced billions in losses. Chinese firms filed tens of thousands of patents, covering not just incremental improvements, but entire new methods of making chips. And when China restricted exports of rare earth elements, materials essential for electronics, the leverage was obvious. This was about far more than technology, it was about power. And speaking of power, let's pause here. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think China's tech sovereignty push is sustainable? or will the West eventually reassert dominance? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I read everyone and your perspective adds depth to these discussions. Now, while semiconductors laid the foundation, Huawei took the revolution to the skies. In late 2024, they unveiled the Mate 70, a smartphone capable of connecting directly to satellites. No extra antennas, no bulky equipment, just your phone in your hand, working anywhere on Earth. Imagine hiking in Yellowstone stranded without a signal. With this device, you could still send a message through satellites orbiting hundreds of kilometers above you. The technology is jaw-dropping. A tiny power amplifier chip boosts signals enough to hit satellites moving at 27,000 kilometers per hour. An antenna system tracks them in real time, with barely a second of delay. 
Compare that to Apple's satellite SOS, which is limited and slow, or SpaceX's Starlink, which needs a pizza box antenna. Huawei's approach works with just the phone itself, everywhere, all the time. And the implications are staggering. In Africa, where building thousands of cell towers would cost tens of billions, a constellation of satellites makes nationwide coverage affordable. Nigeria alone would need $40 billion in traditional telecom infrastructure. Yet Huawei's satellites can deliver it for a fraction of the cost. Ministers from across Africa are already lining up to explore this leapfrog solution. Meanwhile, American telecoms have sunk over $100 billion into 5G networks. What happens if a few billion dollars in satellites make all of that infrastructure obsolete? That's not just a disruption, it's an earthquake. By early 2025, Huawei's satellite phones were saving lives in disaster zones, keeping sailors connected in the Pacific, and helping researchers in the Arctic stay online. And behind it all stood China's Tian Satellite Network, originally built for military use, now open for civilian life. It's not just communication, it's strategy. A parallel infrastructure, independent of Western control, encrypted end-to-end -end and nearly impossible to block. And just when the world was wrapping its head around that, Huawei struck again. June 2025 saw the release of the Pura 80 Ultra, a smartphone so advanced that crowds camped outside stores overnight to buy it. Think about that. A Chinese brand, under sanctions, without access to Google services, creating iPhone-style lines around the block. The reason? A camera system that professional photographers describe as revolutionary. Dual telephoto lenses with a massive sensor, variable aperture, and AI-driven image processing that rivals professional cameras. Wildlife photographers are already using it for National Geographic-level work. Under the hood, the Pura 80 Ultra runs on the Kirin 9020 chip, built in China and powered by Harmony OS, Huawei's homegrown operating system. The phone's performance, design, and battery technology are so strong that even Samsung and Apple reportedly scrambled to accelerate their own plans. Huawei's success is not just about gadgets, it's about resilience. Cut off from global supply chains, forced to build its own chips, banned from Android, they still managed to out-innovate the giants. For middle-aged and older audiences who've seen decades of technology evolve, this feels like a turning point. A reminder that disruption doesn't only come from California garages, it can come from Shenzhen labs too. So what does this all mean for the future? In just two years, China has broken through barriers that were meant to contain it. It has shown that sanctions and restrictions can be catalysts for reinvention. And it has proven that the technological world we took for granted, where the West set the standards and the rest followed, is fading. Two technological worlds are emerging, one led by Western firms, another driven by China's own vision. The age of one-size-fits-all global tech is ending. The future will be competitive, fragmented, and most of all, unpredictable. And that's where I'll leave you today. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into China's technological revolution, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.